Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our virtual exper experiment on uh, flow rate and viscosity. So we're going to be going through a quick little demo today just to make sure that you can see how we're going to measure flow rate and talk about how that affects viscosity and how viscosity affects flow rate. Uh, so we're going to do this, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need, and you can do this at home, I'd recommend that you try this at home. I'm going to use a funnel here today in order to pour out my ingredients or my uh, substances that I'm going to use. You can use a paper cup, poke a hole in the bottom and use that. Just use the same cup every time so that you know the hole in the bottom is the same. Uh, the other thing that we're going to need here is we're going to use a beaker and the reason I'm going to use a beaker is to catch the things that come out of my funnel. I don't want to make a mess and if you're doing this at home I bet your parents wouldn't want you to make a mess all over the counter or the kitchen or the living room or the dog or something like that. So you're probably going to want a cup in order to catch whatever's coming out of uh, the thing that you're trying. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to use is I uh, am going to use this setup. This is called a retort stand. I've got a clamp here. I'm going to put my beaker underneath. You'll see that uh, later on in the video. And that's just so that it's easy for me to do. I can put my finger under the, beak, under the funnel so that I can stop the flow until I'm ready for it to happen. Now you might want to have a friend or a sibling or maybe a parent help you with that uh, so that you can have a couple of hands free to make sure that you're doing things uh, as close to accurate as you can. Now in my experiment today, I'm going to use a couple of different fluids. So one fluid I'm going to use is I'm going to use corn syrup. Uh, this stuff is pretty thick. So when things are thick, we call them viscous. This has got a high viscosity. Uh, then on the other end of the scale, I'm going to have uh, some water. And so this is regular old water, nothing special about that. And then of course, in the middle, I'm going to use uh, some vegetable oil. So these are three different fluids and we're going to talk about how their viscosity affect their flow rate. That's the whole purpose of doing this experiment. And you can follow along with the notes I've posted for you online. And that's it. So let's get started with our experiment. So here we have our apparatus set up. I've got a beaker here to catch the fluid as it's flowing out of the funnel. I've actually pre-measured an area on my funnel. So I've got uh, a mark here and that's going to be 22 milliliters. So we're going to start with the uh, water here. So our first run on the water, I'm going to hold my thumb over the bottom. I'm going to fill it up to my mark. And I'm going to let go. And so this is where you're going to want to start looking for your time code. And three, two, one. And now that's all the way out now. And so we're gonna repeat this experiment. So I'm gonna refill it up to my lump mark, 22 milliliters, three, two, one. So you wanna get your time reading from that. And now we'll do a third one. Here we go, three, two, one. And you may have noticed that some things happen with the funnel during these uh, runs on the trials. This is why we're looking for three trials and we'll average them out. So now we're gonna continue the experiment. We're gonna run it using a vegetable oil. And so again, we're gonna use the same marks that we have the same volume. So I'm gonna fill this up. Same procedure, I'm putting my thumb on the bottom to keep it from flowing until I'm ready. Here's my 22 milliliters, and three, two, one. And there we go. I'd say it's empty now. And so we're gonna do this again. Some air bubbles ex escaping. So let those escape. I can put in the rest of the 22 milliliters. Sometimes you just need to help those air bubbles along because of the adhesion along the sides of the funnel. And it's not much volume that's changed there, but I'll get a little dribble in here to top it up. There we go. And three. Two, one. 
And we've got a few drips here at the end, and I would say we're empty now. And then the last one for 22 milliliters. There we go. And three, two, one. And of course, we've got those few drips here at the end, and it looks like we're emptying right about now. So the last run that we're going to do is going to be with the corn syrup. So we're going to use uh, some uh, white corn syrup here. I'm going to use the same 22 milliliters. This may take a little bit of different uh, approach, but we're going to see how this goes. So I'm gonna fill this up. Again, I'd really encourage you to try some of these at home. This experiment would be great if you could try some different types of household uh, items. And we're gonna get this guy filled up here. All right, that looks like it's at the top of my 22 milliliters right now. And I'm gonna make sure my funnel is underneath or my beaker in three, two, one.
This is really great here. If you can see, I'm not sure, but there's air bubbles or particles actually moving down through here. I wonder why the air bubbles are moving down. Shouldn't the air bubbles be moving up? Hmm, interesting. Now at the end, you can see all of these air bubbles in a large mass. Most of them are coming down, but some of them have stopped moving. What is going on? It's a very interesting phenomenon that we can discuss. Oh, we're almost at the end. A few drips here. Not quite finished yet. Almost. I think we'll go two more drips. Absolutely. One more and that's the end. There we go. We can finish it there. So I don't think we'll run this one another time. Uh, we'll just use the one for the video just in the interest of uh, the length of the video. But if you do want to try this one at home, I'd encourage you to do so.